Hello subscribers and non-subscribers and welcome back to Let's Play Victoria 2. So sorry there was no part last week. The reason for that is quite simply that when I attempted to record this part previously my screen went black and when I got up to go ahead and do what I have to do to get my system back up and operational when that occurs I decided to go and reboot. Um, probably immediately after the screen went black there was a blue screen of death but of course I couldn't see it because my screen was black. Um, Luckily, it looks like AMD has finally managed to fix the issue, at least for me. Um, in the update that they, and the uh, new drivers they released on the 27th. Uh, I mean, I've had good days in the past, but they've never been back to back. So I didn't have the issue at all on the 27th. And I haven't had the issue at all on the 28th. I'm technically recording this at like one in the morning on the 29th. Um, so I'm inclined to believe that the issue has been fixed. Uh, obviously, I can't necessarily say for certain. I, it could be a fluke that I've had two good days back to back, but I kind of doubt it. I'm inclined to believe that AMD has finally managed to fix the issue for me. Uh, but let's go ahead and get our timer started. So this is technically my third attempt at playing this save. The first time was just me playing to kind of formulate a plan. The second attempt was that initial attempt at recording. And now this time is... Uh, second attempt at recording this i'm gonna have to go ahead and redo some of our armies i already knew this was gonna happen those guys are gonna go and run into an army so i'm just gonna let them run into an army Also, if I recall correctly from my first attempt, yes, I forgot to set some of these armies to not hunt rebels because, you know, I don't need them hunting rebels anymore. Now, I can't really rebuild any of my armies until the... Um, armies that we are currently building for the sole purpose of hunting rebels are done being built. And that's a ways out. Oh, was that another minor rebellion? No, this one is um, Irish in origin. So, not our problem, but we're going to help them deal with it because Ireland's our friend. And friends help friends. Also, I kind of need them to stay on my side. I don't want to have to deal with issues. Also, um, a couple things I can try. I say try. A couple things I can do, rather, is uh, move some troops around. I can easily send the weaker armies off to the eastern front because... Well, I don't really need them. To be completely honest, the reality of the situation is... Um, Russia's not going to do anything in this next war, for the most part. I mean, that isn't to say we're... They're just going to sit there with their hands tied behind their back, but, you know, they're not really going to do anything. So this should help us to be able to just kind of sit there and twiddle our thumbs on the eastern front for the most part. Though I will say these rebels are going to be an annoyance for us. Hence why I'm wanting to build a army for the sole purpose of dealing with them. That's fine. Let's 
to take care of this. Wonderful. Damn it. Oh wait, no, you're not missing anything. You're just moving from one front to the other. Uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and drop the troops off in Cork. Just to make my life a little bit easier. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead because the reality is the Russians have most of their troops stationed up here on the northern uh, front, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of reorganize our armies a little. To put most of our well-equipped troops up there in the north. Slightly more damaged troops will be down in the south. Let's go ahead and get modern divisional structure. Now the reality is I don't need to have those troops there, so I'm actually going to bring them up here. Because I'm going to need more troops to deal with France. Particularly along the Belgian border because France seems to have the vast majority of their troops stationed along the Belgian border rather than any other border. Now, admittedly, it is a little bit of overkill to have four armies stationed in Ireland. Um, but that's the reality of the situation. I don't quite trust the Irish to be able to effectively uh, get over there. Also, we're going to bring one of our navies and station them. Um, and Belfast, so they can quickly move into the Irish Sea. Uh, we are not building any dreadnoughts right now. Uh, you know what, actually, the Austrian Navy can deal with that. The German Navy, however, I'm going to station in... Said so the German Navy, I'm going to station in Rotterdam. so they can more quickly roll out. Go ahead and help the Dutch deal with their anarcho-liberals so that we don't have to worry about them switching sides for whatever reason. It's not quite something I want to have to deal with. Oh, God damn it, game. Why would you do this to me? Okay, so we're going to be forced to choose between do we support the Belgians or do we support the Netherlands? The reality of the situation is between these two and who is more useful, the Belgians are more useful. Um, the Dutch aren't actually that useful. Um... All things considered, I think the Belgians are a little bit more. Sure, the Dutch have a colonial empire, but it's not really relevant. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say we're going to back the Belgians. I fully expect somebody to support the um, Dutch, and I'm going to tell them both to piss off, and we'll white peace out. Uh, we want to go for jingoism. And end result of that is nothing changes, and I'm fine with that. Now, I could have told the Belgians to piss off, but then somebody else might have potentially supported them. And there's a big uprising I was kind of worried about and why I was trying to build an army. Well, two armies for the sole purpose of dealing with it. Because I knew it was going to happen eventually. Oof. 
Uh, I'm going to send these two armies to deal with that one first. And of course, as a result of this, I'm going to have to rebuild some of our smaller armies now, of course, as well. Or rather, those armies that are reinforcing or that are being built. Having a hard time getting the right term out. Uh, that are being built to go ahead and be used in the rebel suppression armies. So we're going to have to rebuild a bunch of stuff, which is kind of annoying. Of course, part of the reason why we're having Yalkapin rebels is because they don't think they're free enough. That's the only way I can deal with the Yakubins is to give them more rights, but I can't really give them more rights when I have a leading party that doesn't care to pass political reforms and social reforms. But they're the one political party that I want to have in charge because between my choices, they're the only really good choice. So, you know, you're kind of shit out of luck. And there's no reason to have tensions for Posen. No, no, damn it game, I'm trying to pause so I can click on all of these damn pop-ups that you're giving me. Okay, Brazil wants an alliance. Sure, you're not going to join me. I already know that. But I'll give you your alliance. As soon as I declare war on the British, you're going to tell me to piss off. Uh, long live the captains of industry for a whole crap ton of industry. Or research points. Admittedly, it doesn't actually matter too much. It's a crap ton. But we also need a crap ton to be able to do anything anyway, so... It didn't really speed things up much, if at all. Okay, we'll press the enter key for all of these because it's just being crap when I try to click OK. Uh, we do residency for our people. I don't quite remember where you were going originally. If I had to make a guess, I think you were up here somewhere. I'm going to put you in a... Where is that? In a Hasselt for now, while I figure out exactly where you were originally supposed to be going. Okay, you're not supposed to go there. I don't know why that. I don't know why you're over there. Okay, you're Gelt, so you go to Antwerp. Kind of wish I could have a nice toggle button for just turning off Hunt Rebels for all armies. And it would just quickly go through all the armies and turn it off for anybody who has it on. Also kind of wish, you know, I could just select everybody and down here at the very bottom there would be a nice button for Hunt Rebels to toggle it on and off for all selected armies. And it would make sure to toggle them all onto the same setting initially. Um... Militancy or consciousness for poor strata or uh, middle class strata. So this is um, Nordhern, it was saying, if I recall correctly. Uh, so let's just try and take a quick glance. Uh, laborers and craftsmen make up the vast majority. Uh, I don't quite recall what is what. Laborers are poor. Okay. Um, how is that place about me? Is it, is rebellion a particularly big issue or no? Again, kind of wish I could see a militancy scale or something on here. 
or just something for like an average militancy of the entire region or something. Uh, but I'm inclined to say I think they are kind of pissed at us. I'm seeing quite a few tens. So um, let's try not to gain militancy for the poor. So let them work undisturbed, sure. I didn't even read the event. I don't know what the hell it was about, but that's fine. Uh, okay, come on, game. Go and get that army back up to full strength. There we go. Thank you very much. Conservatives win again. Mostly as a result of a alliance with the reactionary party. Everybody else is a little too divided to be able to win an election. Which is just what we need. I think what we lost might have been um, artillery, but I'm not 100% certain on that. There's our armies upgrading again to a new design. Let's get great war experience. Actually, no, let's get better railroads. No, great war experience is more useful. You know, what with the whole we're planning to go to war in the near future. Uh, now, admittedly, I could be justifying a war right now. But I'm not in a rush. The game doesn't end until 1936 or until the year rolls over to 1936. So we've still got about 16 years going on now. Um, well, I guess a little over that right now, obviously. But yeah, about 16 years. So we got time. And the reality is the war is not going to take super long. So let's, let's not rush into anything allow our army's time to build up, to recuperate. First things first, got to get my rebel suppression armies built. Once those are built, then I can go ahead and get these armies back up to full strength, which shouldn't take too long. Damn, and I used infantry. I probably should have just used guardsmen for these guys. They'd be much more expensive for what they're doing, but they're also a little bit less likely to rebel in general. Uh, Ireland fears our might. You have no reason to fear my might, Ireland. I have. It is completely in my best interest to help you. So literally no reason to fear me. I won't be invading you. In fact, I will be allowing you an opportunity to stick it to the people who used to control you. Ah, uh, gets me a cut down to size on Punjab, which of course means a war with nobody, apparently. I was going to say with the British, but apparently the British don't have Punjab in their sphere or anything. Which is interesting, but I don't care about it. So... I get more of a hit by saying we must tolerate the differences between our respective cultures. Fine. Our options are limited and force of arms must be considered. We're not actually going to do that. Also, they're a landlocked country, so I can't really get to them anyway. I'd have to get military access through uh, Sindh here. And there's no guarantee I can do that. Yeah, yeah they'd say no. And what do I get? Cut down to size does nothing for me. Okay, I need 10 artillery. One, two, three, four. Damn it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. God damn it, all this stuff is all over the place. Let's try it again. One, two. Uh, 
Thank you, game. I kind of need you to not be reorganizing this damn list for whatever reason it seemed like you were doing before. Six, seven, eight. And I'm going to send you to Berlin. You are actually shy on infantry, so I think what you lost was actually infantry. So let's get some more infantry, I guess. One, two, three, four. Um, and set you to hunt rebels. Okay, Create War Experience is about to be made available to us. So that's a nice little bonus for us. Now let's go ahead and get the better railroads. Uh, German Empire's relations. An article in a German newspaper paints a picture of the amiable relations with the United Kingdom, calling on numerous examples of peaceful cooperation based on trust and friendship. The editor declared both nations to stand as friends and brothers. Game, you are on absolute crack if you think we are standing as friends and brothers with the United Kingdom. Uh, using words like trustworthy, steadfast, and reliable to describe their relations, the newspaper encouraged the German Empire's government to continue aligning themselves with the United Kingdom's policy to pursue common interests and to strengthen mutual guarantees and assurances. Again, whoever wrote that article, this seems to be an article about another article in a different newspaper, I'm assuming. Um, but whoever wrote that original article, they're smoking some serious crack. Because, no, game, we are not on good terms with the UK. We will never be on good terms with the UK. The US continues to lose the war of, for the liberation of the Yukon territory because the US absolutely sucks at fighting wars. Mostly their issues they pieced out the British, and they shouldn't have, because that was giving them war support that they could have used to attempt to get peace. To actually get their original claim. You'd never peace out minor members in Vicky. There is no good reason to do so. In EU4, however, and 3 as well, I believe, there are good reasons at times to, you know peace out minor members separately but in Vicky there's no reason to oh Japan what do you need Japan's going to war with China and wants my help in a war that they're gonna win because there is no way in hell China manages to turn around and win this a war between Japan and China doesn't really matter also there's a thing going on with uh, Russia cutting down to size Kokand because for some reason you th think there's a good reason to cut them down to size. I can understand if you're using it as a justification to then proceed to take land. The AI is not that smart. I'm going to be honest with you all. The AI is absolutely stupid in that regard. It's not going to take this as an opportunity to conquer land off Kokand. So Kokand's going to get cut down to size for literally no reason. As for Japan asking us for help, I'll say yes. I won't join it. They literally have no reason to need my help. And I don't want to use the infamy to take land off of them. And Spain has become a great power. So Spain wants to be friends. Which is good for us, of course. Because Spain opens up another front against the French when we inevitably declare a war on Russia to fight our... Uh, to fight the Entente basically um so that's going to be helpful for us of course i do have the opportunity if i so desire to ship troops over to spain so i can march in through spain but i'm gonna kind of hope spain just does a decent enough job distracting the french they'll either march straight up into southern france and distract them that way or the french will divert troops down there to deal with them I think the former is slightly more likely than the latter, mostly because of the way the AI works. Um, or at least it did in my test run.
uh, piss off socialists or make more people in favor of state-controlled trade unions. Let them be. It's not like I can institute that anytime soon, guys. I hope you all realize that. I really do hope you all realize that. Also, I still think that's like way down here at the bottom of the list, all things considered. Y yes, actually, it's literally at the bottom of the list. So that still isn't going to happen anytime soon, no matter how much the game really wants it to happen. Now, see, I will say I wish I could get Switzerland on my side. Because that would be wonderful, because then I don't need to worry about the French marketing troops through Switzerland to attack me. But sadly, I can't stop them. So that's going to be an issue we have to deal with. But I think we are sort of quickly approaching me being ready to go ahead and declare the war, um, or at least start justifying it, but I kind of need to wait for Japan to finish their little petty war with China. But that shouldn't take too long. Because, like I said, there's no way in hell China would be able to fight back. Also, what's going on with the U.S. is military? It is third place, and yet they kind of seem like they're still struggling a little more than they should be. As far as I can tell, they have not been invaded. So none of their actual land is occupied on the continental side. But it looks like some of their Pacific Islands might be, yes, occupied. Also, apparently the U.S. doesn't own Hawaii. That's a major screw-up. They gotta do that at some point. They won't, because it's way too late for the AI to bother saying, let's take Hawaii. Uh, ooh. Uh, not a big fan of the whole Ireland's relation paper regarding uh, relations between the French and the Irish. I'm gonna have to do something about that. And by do something about that, I mean do nothing, because I don't actually have to. The two of them are not going to get along particularly well no matter what. I kind of want to try and build those dreadnoughts now. How long does a dreadnought take to build? 116 days. You know what? That's not too long. Wait, how many dreadnoughts am I building again? 10. Okay. I couldn't quite remember if it was 10 or 5 or something. So let's go ahead and get those 10 built up, and then we'll ship them over here to join up with the Austrian Imperial Navy afterwards. You know, half a year is not too bad for getting Dreadnoughts out. Let's continue upgrading that down there, even though we're not going to do anything with it. And got the better railroads now. Wonderful. Let's get better industry, I suppose. Organizational development. I could lower taxes, but our people are perfectly fine paying 80% uh, for the poor, 70 for the middle class, and 60 for the rich with 10% tariffs. Oof. Liberals gained quite a bit in the upper house there. Uh, China's wanting peace. I'm not going to accept whatever China's offering. I'm going... Why? Why Manchuria? Why do you want to cut down to size China? China's already screwed. There is literally no reason to do this. Also, they're not going to accept that anyway, so you're kind of SOL. I could screw Japan out of territory, but I'll let Japan take it. I, I don't care for it, so if Japan wants the land, they can have the land, but Manchuria is not getting the cut down to size. Also, personally, I wouldn't have gone for Southern um, Anhui. I would have gone for Suzo, personally.
just because it gets you more coastal territory. And coastal territory is more useful than this, in my opinion. France wants to walk through my land. France, not gonna happen. Armistice signed, China surrenders, wonderful. How much time is left on my timer out of curiosity? I think it might be close to over. Actually, yes, there's literally 34 seconds left on it right now. Um, so let's go ahead and end this part off with justifying a war. And uh, next part, we will at least start fighting the war. At probably fairly early on in the uh, part. Wait for my timer to go off real quick. Ah, uh, you know what, screw it. I can just cancel. I already know it's about to go off anyway. Um, so let's go ahead, justify the war. We're going to go for a nice, simple humiliate because it doesn't hurt us if we get caught. It's only three infamy. Uh, double check that you are still allied with both France and the UK. Yes, you are wonderful. I just had to double check that because, you know, if... You broke your alliance with one of the two, we wouldn't be getting the full Entente, and I kind of needed to know that beforehand. So like I said, we'll go for a nice, simple Humiliate. And that'll be it for this part. I will see you all next time, where we will be um, starting the war. No, 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 God, ah, screw it. I'll give you Polish artillery. I'm just going to hope the Poles don't decide to rise up in the middle of a war. I mean, it's the perfect time to rise up if they do decide to do it, but I'm hopeful they won't. Uh, you need an infantry and a cavalry. I will give you a Russian Hussar and a Polish infantry. Or not a Polish infantry. Actually, I think you're going to be SOL because this guy needs stuff as well. What does he need? Two infantry. So you get Polish and um, Ukrainian, and okay, now I can give you your infantry, wonderful. What do you need? Two infantry and a cavalry. Two Polish infantry and a hussar. You need three infantry and a hussar. So Ukrainian hussar and three Ukrainian infantry. You need two infantry and two artillery yes so two romanian infantry and two romanian artillery that i'm gonna spread out across two provinces because artillery takes longer anyway and with that once those troops are built up we will be perfectly fine to go ahead and declare our war once obviously also the um justification is done Ooh. I think it's going to take a little longer actually for uh i probably shouldn't have you know i'm going to cancel that justification right now we haven't let it go at all the reason i'm canceling that is because some of these things are going to take 120 days to even uh to be built um after getting all of their resources which i don't know how long that'll take it's going to take us 143 days um to justify our humiliate war on Russia and there's a bit of an issue there of the CB will only last so long I don't recall how long it is off the top of my head but I think it might be less time than what it'll take for us to get all of those troops over there ready to go so yeah we're gonna go ahead and change of plans not do that right now um, as for my plans for this war just to give you all a quick heads up my plan is to liberate Scotland uh, that'll probably result in the UK going communist. That's what's happened literally every time I've run a test run and liberated Scotland. I don't know what it is about Scotland, but apparently everything south of Scotland is, has a large enough communist um, supporters to cause the UK to have uprisings that eventually force a communist party to power. Um, of course, eventually conservatives also come back around later, in my experience. Um, as for France, I will probably take uh, Picardy, just for the heck of it. I can walk into it from Belgium, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, 
I don't plan to take anything off Russia. I don't care about Russia in the slightest, so most land will likely be taken off of France. Like I said, that'll include Bacardi. I don't know what else. I might do Normandy, potentially. We'll see. Um, or French Comte. Or French Comte, I guess it is. Whatever. Because uh, that actually has decent industry, if I recall correctly. No, actually it doesn't. I don't know why I thought it did. Whatever, we might take it anyway. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what I decide to actually take off of France. But definitely Scotland's getting liberated. Ooh. Why did Scandinavia break their lines with me? Let's re-get that and then we'll end the part. I don't know why Scotland or Scandinavia broke their lines with us. But for some reason they did. For a moment. It made absolutely no... Ah. I think they had an uprising that forced the Socialist Party into power. I don't think they were Socialists before. And so that caused them to lose their alliance with me. That's my best guess. I don't actually know that for certain. But that'll be it for this part. This next war is going to be the last big war we fight, um, or at least it's the only last one I'm planning. I don't expect another one to occur either, because uh, this war should weaken uh, the UK, France, and Russia significantly enough to the point where none of them can really fight a big war again, and the only other powers that are likely to fight a big war are me, the US, and Japan. Um, Spain doesn't really exist as a large enough power to fight a big war and the only other person they can fight is France and if they time it right they should be able to trounce France relatively easily especially if they call me in um, but yeah this next great war which I is it the second or third I think it's the second whatever it is we'll find out um, but that should be the last major war of this campaign i think so a quick reminder i do have a link down in the description below to a google form that asks you all to choose who you would like me to play as next time your choices are brazil two sicilies spain um russia the ottomans persia japan and i think that's it i don't think i have Scotland on there, or not Scotland, Sweden on there. I might though, I don't recall, and I don't think France is on there either. Also, I think, I'm not sure if the Netherlands might be on there. They might be, but I don't think they are. I don't quite recall exactly who I have on there. I made it so long ago at this point, it feels like. Um, but yes, so link that down below in the description if you wish to go ahead and check it out and vote. I haven't looked at it recently. Last time I looked, uh, it was still Brazil at 9 votes, I believe it was, and 2 Sicilies at 2. Um, but it's probably been at least half a week since I last looked at it, so that might have changed. Um, so yes, like I said, you can find a link to that down in the description below. Also down there, you can find links to my Patreon and Discord. I highly recommend joining my Discord, if for no other reason than being kept up to date on channel happenings. You don't necessarily have to be active on it, but I do advise at least... Um, joining it so you can be kept up to date on channel happenings as well as I have it set up to alert people when a post is made um, also I have er, and as for the patreon that is the best way to help support the channel if you enjoy the content uh, for as little as a dollar a month you get early access to all of my videos the higher tiers get you a couple of extra bonuses such as getting your name in game um, or depending on the game, it's priority name in game. Uh, that mostly applies to XCOM and XCOM-like games, but generally it's just you need to be a patron to get your name in game. So, yes. The only reason why XCOM and those types of games are an exception is because I figure there's a good chance quite a few people are going to die anyway. So, yeah. Uh, but that'll be it for this part. Like I said, I will see you all next time where we will be next part justifying our war against Russia so we can fight the Entente. And that, like I said, will 
likely be the last major war fought in this campaign. I don't expect to see another one happen, but hey, I could be wrong. Uh, but until next time, goodbye and farewell.